Wolverine's claws have been made up of several different things over the years, but what and why? Let's find out. What's up my comic comrades? At this point you have to be living under a rock to not know that Hugh Jackman is returning to play Wolverine one more time in Deadpool 3. I mean the level of excitement about seeing him don the first live action version of Wolverine's legendary yellow and blue tiger stripe suit is just off the charts. So with that on the brain we want to take a look at the evolution of Wolverine's claws. In the second half of this episode we're also going to show you what ridiculous name the creators almost gave Wolverine so you definitely want to stick around for that. Also our new Variant Labs merch shop is now available in the merch shelf attached to every variant episode including this one so be sure to check that out for some dope variant swag and rep the variant nation like myself now whether you're talking about comics tv or in the movies wolverine's claws are the most recognizable thing about the character and just downright one of the coolest weapons and abilities in the superhero world and over the years we've seen them made of bone adamantium and more it all really started with wolverine's first appearance in the incredible hulk issue 181 look at that clawed mutant beauty on the cover of hulk 181 the funny thing is at the time we didn't even know he was a mutant anyway in his first appearance he shows up to battle the Hulk and Wendigo. Wolverine instantly starts attacking the Hulk, jumping over him with the Hulk saying, little man jumps around like a big rabbit. But Wolverine points his claws at him saying, like a Wolverine, if you don't mind. And like a Wolverine, I've got claws forged of diamond hard adamantium and the power to back them up. So literally on the second page of his first appearance, he's already referring to his diamond hard adamantium claws. But they weren't always adamantium. Nope, in fact, they were bone claws that were later laced with adamantium by Weapon X. But let's go back to see how that happened. And since we're talking Marvel, check out what we got from today's sponsor, Case Defy. These epic iPhone cases are from their dope new Spider-Man by Case Defy collection. Let's check out what we got. Dude, look at these glorious covers. We've got the Spider-Man suit phone case happening, a little Venom action, and this one looks like a comic panel right out of a Spider-Man book. For the real test, I had to try them out. I love the design and feel of the case, and it's a fun way to put my wall crawler fandom on display. And what about this Venom mask case? Bro, while the Spider-Man cases remind us that with great power comes great responsibility, the Case Defy Venom mask phone case brings the darker edge. With its sleek and edgy design inspired by one of Spider-Man's most notorious enemies. We also got this great Spider-Man swinging case, which honestly reminds me of both the comics and the Spider-Man animated shows I watched as a kid. But while I dig them all, I think my favorite is the Spider-Man suitcase. It's just classic Spider-Man. Not to mention each style is available in different case types, like the clear case, mirror case, and the impact case that I'm using. Because I take care of my stuff, but accidents happen, and I'm not trying to replace an iPhone. So why settle for a boring generic phone case when you could rock the style of everyone's favorite web slinger on your phone? Get your today and experience the ultimate combination of protection and style. Check out the Spider-Man by Case Defy collection by using our link in the description below. Now jumping back to Wolverine, we see him use his bone claws for the first time in Wolverine The Origin Issue 2. We learn that way back in the day, the man who would become Wolverine was born under the name James Howlett, and that he was the illegitimate son of a very wealthy farming family, the Howletts. The groundskeeper was a man named Thomas Logan, who we find out, or at least it is heavily implied, is the birth father of James Howlett, aka future Wolverine. And one day, said groundskeeper staged a robbery on the Howlettes. When young Wolverine is going by the name James Howlett, sees Thomas Logan kill his father, the stress from this trauma activated his mutant genes, causing his claws, his bone claws, to come out for the very first time. At which point he savagely kills his biological father, stabbing him in the stomach for killing his stepfather. James then flees the family house he grew up in, and now calls himself Logan living on his own. As years would pass, agents from the Weapon X program would capture him. The Weapon X program was a joint US and Canadian program. After his capture, he was taken to their facility in the Canadian woods, where he was examined by Professor Thornton, Dr. Abraham Cornelius, and Carol Hines. Upon experimenting on him, they learned Logan possessed a mutant healing factor and would be able to survive their experiment of lacing his bones with adamantium. The procedure was so invasive and torturous, it would have killed anyone else without Wolverine's mutant ability. But lucky day for the crazy doctors, they found Wolverine, so they attempted to build the perfect living weapon out of him. Needless to say, the procedure worked, and Logan now had a skeleton completely laced with the diamond hard metal. Metal, including his trademark claws, which were now razor sharp, being able to cut through almost anything. And that's how Wolverine got his adamantium claws. The thing I find interesting and a little bit funny is that up until Hugh Jackman Wolverine, specifically the tragedy that was X-Men Origins Wolverine, a lot of people didn't know Wolverine's claws were bone claws, just laced in adamantium. Anyway, after getting his new metal claws, Wolverine ultimately joined the X-Men, becoming the most popular mutant hands down. But did you know bone claws and adamantium claws aren't the only claws Wolverine has had? You see, when Wolverine was brought back to life during the hunt for Wolverine story, he came back with a new power, so to speak. And what is that power, you ask? Red, hot, 
claws. That's right, Wolverine now had the ability to make his claws red hot. The idea was to eventually have these new heat claws connected to the Phoenix Force somehow, but that ultimately never came to fruition. Instead, it was revealed that bringing Wolverine back to life essentially overcooked or overloaded his healing factor. This overload manifested in heat, which made his claws red hot. It was kind of a cool concept, but overall wasn't well received, which is why it was short-lived. In any case, Wolverine's claws in general are around 12 inches each, and he possesses three on each hand. The claws are housed in his forearm, and every time he extends them, they tear through his flesh. But due to his healing factor, when they are retracted, it heals almost instantly. So that's a really interesting thing that even Hugh Jackman Wolverine touched on. Every time Wolverine extends his claws, they're piercing through his flesh, so he's constantly stabbing himself when he ejects them. It's just his healing factor heals it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. As far as claws pre-adamantium, they're strong enough to tear through most flesh and have been able to cut through most stone and steel. I kind of like to think of his bone claws like ivory from an elephant's tusks or rhino's horns. Very dense, very strong. But then you combine his claws with the adamantium and his claws become virtually indestructible being able to cut through almost anything we're talking about his claws being able to cut thor hulk gladiator and even thanos no matter how you slice it wolverine's claws have a very interesting history and are among the deadliest abilities or weapons in the marvel universe it's kind of his claim to fame and don't lie don't tell me when you were in school you didn't put pencils between your fingers and pretend they were wolverine's claws all of us did that at one point in time you wear that crap as a badge of honor did you know Wolverine was almost called the Badger? That's right. With a ferocious slashing brawler character like Wolverine that has a badass name to go along with it, it's crazy to think he was almost called the Badger. You see how it all went down as writer Len Wein was asked by Marvel to create a superhero for Canadians. So he decided to use a Canadian-based animal as the inspiration for this new character. Then he eventually dwindled it down to two options, a Wolverine and a Badger. And thank God he went with Wolverine because let's be honest, the Badger does not sound cool or threatening at all. It's kind of like Catman for DC, except he actually got named Catman, and let's just say he's not the most admired character. As for Wolverine, he would go on to become one of the most loved and known comic book characters, period. Because Wine went with that name, he based the characteristics off of a Wolverine and not a Badger. John Romita Sr. was then brought on to design the character using the animal as the basis for the character, adding claws to both the character and the motif of his costume, and making him short and stocky. And just like that, the character was dubbed Wolverine, and thankfully not the Badger, because I don't think that would have caught on. Now it's your turn to sound off. Join the discussion on today's episode in the comments down below, and we'll see you next time when we talk some turtle villains.